for a general function it is impossible to compute its full data series because you need to differentiate infinitely often. Fortunately, it's often enough to compute the first few terms of the series, say 2 or 3. Instead of computing the full data series, you compute the nth, second or third partial sum of the series. This sum will be a polynomial in X, that is called the Taylor polynomial. In this video, we'll see that it's precisely and we'll encounter an example in which we will see how well our polynomial approximates our function. So the uh, general Taylor series sums up to infinity and then you have to differentiate over here infinitely often. And now instead of going up to infinity, we will go up to capital N, which means that we will have to differentiate capital N times. So two or three or four times a limited number of times. As n is n partial sum over here, it's called, it's very important, the Taylor polynomial of a function f. So let's give it a try. Uh, let's take our example fx equals e to the power x and let's take a self center point a equals zero. Let's take an easy example. And say we want to uh, compute the first uh, Taylor polynomial t1 of x. So that means we have to sum up to 1. Uh, so we get the n equals 0 term, f0, plus the n equals 1 term, f prime of 0 times x. Well, f of x equals e to the power x, f of 0 equals 1, f prime also e to the power x, so f prime of 0 also 1, so we get 1 plus x. So there we have the t1, the first Taylor polynomial. Then we compute the second one, so the t2 of x, and we have to sum up to t equals 2. So what we do we get? F, f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x plus f double of 0 divided by 2 times x squared. So this is our second Taylor polynomial. And you see we computed already this term over here and that term over here. So our 1 plus x we do have those already. So only need to compute the next one. f double is again e to the power x plug in 0. We get again 1. So we get a 1 half times x squared. So there we have our t2. And you notice that if you continue and continue like this, that your t2 is in fact your previous one, t1, plus the n equals 2 term. So that's how we will compute the t3. The t3 of x third term of polynomial is just the second plus the n equals 3 term, which equals 1 over 3 factorial, third derivative in 0 times x cubed. Well, f of x e equals e to the power x, so differentiating all the known, stays e to the power x, plugging in 0, again 1. So we get as x term 1 over 6 times x cubed, and in the same way we can compute our t4. First part is the same, and we can get one additional term. So now we have computed a few Taylor polynomials. Well, and how good is our approximation? So instead of summing up to infinity, we sum up to capital N equals 1, 2, 3, or 4. So let's make a plot. So the white curve is always the exponential function, and now we are going to plot. Uh, in the first picture, the red one is the t1 over here, and the blue one the t2. And you see, oh well, close to zero, they both approximate the function pretty well. If you go a bit further away, then the t1 is not such a good approximation, but t2 is still fine. So you see the t2 of x approximate the function pretty well. But hey, wait a minute, what happens if you zoom out now? So here we have our sub-boundary 1 for our x, here we put 2, so we zoom a bit out. And then we see that both are not good approximations anymore. Well, we solve this problem, of course. We just take more terms. So instead of taking the t2 of x, we are going to approximate f by the t3 and the t4 of x. So see the numbers of the x-axis here, minus 2 and 2, now the same. And we plotted the t3 in red and the t4 in blue. And we see now uh, they those functions approximate each of our x pretty well, so you can use your either your t3 or your t4. But guess what happens if you zoom out again, going from 3 to minus 3, then the t3 and the t4 are not good anymore. So what do you learn from this? Uh, a Taylor polynomial can be a very good approximation for your function, as long as you are sufficiently close to the point about which you are approximating, zero in this case. If you go further and further away, in general, you will need to uh, keep more and more terms of your Taylor polynomial, so you will need a bigger and bigger 
Okay, I'll put a number of. Anyway, good news is you don't have to differentiate infinitely often.